Hello friends, I am Dr. Rajesh Chokhania, General Pediatrician from Bandra, Mumbai and today we will be talking about how to choose an antibiotic. So today's discussion will be limited to outpatient practice. So the first and most important question when we want to choose an antibiotic is to be clear whether we really need an antibiotic. Most febrile patients have viral respiratory infections which can be easily diagnosed by the accompanying cough and cold and they often also have a history of a contact. Those patients who have many other symptoms but no fever, we should always think twice whether this is really a bacterial infection and does it need an antibiotic. Clinically, it is possible to suspect an acute bacterial infection in a febrile patient when the patient looks and feels sick not only at the peak of fever but also in the interfebrile phase. When we are not clinically sure, we take the help of investigations but we must interpret them carefully. So we know that all neutrophilic leukocytosis or all pyuria does not necessarily mean a bacterial infection. And finally, when we are not sure, we must ask ourselves whether it is safe to wait for a day or two and then decide. All these principles we have discussed in our earlier video. Once we have definitively diagnosed an acute bacterial infection in the outpatient, the choice of an antibiotic depends on many factors, but the most important here is what is the most likely causative organism. Accordingly, we choose an antibiotic which is likely to be a narrow spectrum antibiotic that is effective against that organism. Now, in most outpatient situations, it is impractical to actually look for and isolate the causative organism. So we are guided by epidemiology. Now besides this consideration, there are many additional considerations like the adverse effect profile or choosing a bactericidal over a bacteriostatic antibiotic, cost, palatability, the potential of organisms to develop resistance against an antibiotic, allergy to a particular group of antibiotic, etc. Now, every antibiotic may be effective against many organisms. However, antibiotics are designated as first line for a particular infection and those should be preferred. Those antibiotics which also work in an infection should be used only when the first line cannot be used for some reason. For example, Macrolides may work against upper respiratory infections and may be effective even in GI infections. But the first line antibiotics for these conditions are some other antibiotics. So we should preferentially use macrolides only to treat mycoplasma or chlamydia infections. WHO has come out with a color coded aware classification of antibiotics to guide us about antibiotic usage. So A stands for access or the green group which includes antibiotics like amoxicillin, cephalexin, etc. which are the ones we should regularly access as our first choice to treat common infections. W stands for watch group which is the yellow group which has more broad spectrum antibiotics which are to be used cautiously and which are critical. For example azithromycin quinolones and second and third generation cephalosporins like cefloxime, cefixime, etc. And finally the R or the reserve or the red group which contains last resort antibiotics which should be reserved for only very select situations. Now most respiratory bacterial infections like bacterial tonsillitis, pharyngitis, acurotitis media, acute sinusitis or even community acquired pneumonia which can be treated on an outpatient basis because they are stable. These are all caused by any one of either streptococcus, pneumococcus, H. influenzae or Moraxella catralis and all of them are reasonably susceptible to amoxicillin in the usual dose of 50 mg per kg per day in 3 divided doses. As yet, the resistance to amoxicillin of these organisms is not so high and therefore it still remains our drug of first choice. Further, all these conditions can be clinically monitored for lack of improvement and we almost always get a second chance if our primary antibiotic fails to change the antibiotic. 
therefore choosing a higher antibiotic upfront for fear of resistance in stable outpatients is likely to lead to more antibiotic resistance in the long run in the community and should be avoided high dose amoxicillin at the rate of 90 mg per kg per day is not usually required in the indian setting further scientifically amoxicillin alone suffices but unfortunately because of uh, wider marketing and wider availability most people end up using amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid where they could have used amoxicillin alone ideally we should be choosing amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid in situations where for example in otitis media a patient has recently received another antibiotic so we would choose this combination up front or in opd situations where we are suspecting staph aureus as the causative organism for some reason if the patient is more than 5 year old and or if there are clinical features to suggest a mycoplasma or a chlamydia infection like a not very sick patient but continuing to be febrile with a bad cough and no cold or a staccato cough with a conjunctival discharge we would upfront choose a macrolide like azithromycin clarithromycin and roxithromycin are other macrolides which have no distinct advantage over azithromycin and are very much similar for skin and soft tissue infections they are usually caused by gram positive organisms and therefore cefalexin or cefadroxil works well here now bacterial infections below the diaphragm are usually caused by gram negative organisms and therefore for acute bacillary dysentery or enteric fever or uti the preferred uh, empiric treatment is cefixin which has a good gram negative cover now contrary to what we spoke so far enteric fever and uti are two outpatient situations where we want to find out the exact causative organism this is so because both these illnesses are often caused by organisms that are resistant to multiple antibiotics and if our empirically chosen antibiotic is not working clinically it may become difficult to pick up a progressive or a worsening infection or a complication so in both these situations a blood culture and a an urine culture respectively are a must before starting antibiotics preferably not only to confirm the diagnosis accurately but also to pick up the exact germ and its antibiotic susceptibility of course while we await culture reports we start cefixin as an empiric antibiotic because of its good chances of being effective of course after the culture report if necessary we can change though we remind ourselves that we need to interpret culture reports properly like we have learned in our earlier videos nitrofurantoin can be used to treat cystitis but it's a local antibiotic that doesn't work systemically and therefore should not be used to treat febrile or upper uti's now in in patients they are often unstable and therefore we often start with a combination of antibiotics to try and provide a broad gram positive gram negative and even anaerobic cover where applicable but we must make every attempt to find the organism through cultures and other reports and once we do find the organism we should try and narrow down our antibiotic usage second and third generation cefalosporins like cefuroxime cefpodoxime should be used as step down antibiotics for patients who were admitted and treated with intravenous antibiotics and are now to continue some oral antibiotic to complete the course so friends to summarize viral infections are very easy to diagnose and we don't need any antibiotic there as far as bacterial infections are concerned above the diaphragm they are fairly well localized and amoxicillin is our drug of choice going by epidemiology it may be difficult for us to localize bacterial infections below the diaphragm so our empiric choice is cefixin while we await cultures to guide us further in enteric fever and in uti and in in patients let's start broad but narrow down as early and as soon as possible 
थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो विल बी बाय डॉक्टर पलनी रामन ऑन हाउ टू चूज एन एंटी मलेरिया